All right, three, two, one. Yo, this is Chit Chat with Chitty MD. I am Jerry Chittister, MD. That stands for medical doctor. Boom, I'm, breaking news. Boom. If y'all didn't know, now you know. New business, who dis? So we are, <laughs> we have a bunch of stuff going on today. It is just after the Christmas holidays, and we're trying to get settled into our new location. So we're going to talk a lot about stuff today. Our new business, Jerry Chittis or MD. It's a PLLC, so Professional Limited Liability Corporation. Uh, we'll talk about the business, kind of where we're at, what's going on. What is what is the difference between a PLLC and an LLC? Because I have never heard PLLC before. Yeah. We hadn't either until this. Yeah. So my understanding is, is P stands for professional. So professional, in terms of professions, it has to do with my understanding, what I heard is that like attorneys, accountants, physicians, you know, professional people like, you know, whether CPA or attorney, whatever their degree is. People that require Um, extra degrees beyond. I guess. I don't know. But yeah, it's a professional. So I think it has to do with like taxes and things. You know, it's just smarter for, you know, making sure that you're doing things properly, but that taxes are, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not an accountant person, but well, that was the advice I received one. from someone you I trust. Are a professional LLC now, so yeah. There was another one they told you to look into, or that we looked into and talked to the accountant about too, and it was like it meant like private. Oh, PC. PC, yeah, private corporation. Yeah. So there's different, and it's all tax related. But and P L L C is what our accountant ultimately. Yeah. Right, Shows well. for us. So that's or what it is. New, so Chittister new MD day. LLC was my old entity. So the new one is uh, Jerry Chittister MD PLC. I noticed uh, it was. It's been a probably been a couple months, and I never asked you. Like, is that is this change part of what made you change your YouTube handle from Chittister MD to Jerry Chittister MD? What, what was the driving factor there? Oh, for the name. Yeah, for your Instagram. Yeah, I think, you know, there was a reason why I'd use Chittister MD at the time with my former business partner, um, just aligning kind of how we named things just to be Uh, in sync. His website has always been Jerry Chittister MD. Yeah, because Chittister MD was actually not available. There's someone who is holding (laughs) on to it in Florida. It's not a website. (laughs) Squatters. Yeah, and yeah. I actually contacted them, and we they were not very it. nice. They just hung up on us and then said that it was not available. But it's just sitting there. So I don't know. I've thought about flying down to this place in Florida where this person owns it and just talking to them in person, not accost them or them threaten the them. Park. But We can have them on the podcast. We'll go down there, <laughs> podcast <laughs> on remote. Yeah. <laughs> will you sell us your... But yeah, we don't I mean, need it now, so it actually worked out. Yeah, it actually it. worked yeah, out. We're going to stay with Jerry Chittister MD. Mm-hmm. That's well, what it is. It's good in case there's any other Chittister MDs out there. We don't want to be confused. There are other Chittister MDs, yeah, too. Yeah, there's a, there's a urologist local here. Chittister. Yeah, I get calls all the time. And for, are you not related to him? Not that I'm we sure we're of. related. I just, not, I've asked my dad and stuff. They don't know. Not immediately. Yeah. There's quite a few Chittisters in Salt Lake City in this area that I don't know. <laughs> we, should, we should interview the urologist and ask I wonder him if he gets how many times his name's been misspelled. So you, you get penile yeah. calls and I he do. maybe gets breast calls and maybe. you guys are like, wrong Yeah, parts. I get calls for orders. You know, they're like, um, can you f- sign the orders for this patient's, you know, whatever surgery? I'm like, oh, um, that's not me. <laughs> that's the other guy. <laughs> so we do that. Anyway, so if you guys remember last week, um, we had a mukbang with cookies here. <laughs> I don't know if you guys had tried those. They're awesome cookies. I well, think I actually we still have a few stale ones left. Because Crumble only does their cookies for like one week at a time. Oh, yeah. They rotate so them. Nobody could try the ones that we were trying. <laughs> yeah. Wah, wah. So, but all the other places had them. Funny story about but Crumble. But those were the best ones. <laughs> so my mom my is opinion. doing DoorDash on the side. Oh, nice. Oh, I saw and, her one day. Oh, at, did um, you? I think she said. Uh, yeah, we're at the, the Hawaiian. Oh, yes. Yeah, so Mo Betas. Mo Betas. Oh. I yeah, saw her that. She told me about that. that was so so that she's, she's doing that. And I'm hungry. all the time, <laughs> I would say like at least a couple of times a week, there are people that will place an order. They pay for it in advance. My mom goes and picks it up and, and goes to take it to them. And for whatever reason, they cancel before she delivers what? it to them. So she's stuck with their food. What? But they've already paid. She's got her money, and like now she's food? got their free food. What? So the other day, she came home with a box full of crumble cookies. No it, way. It was the, people do it that? It was the four-pack of one one of diff- all the different mm. flavors. Uh, okay. So we all divvied them up and ate them. But nice. It was just so kind of, an, it was kind of funny because it happened right after yeah, we had the mukbang. Why would they do that? 
people got so much money that they just throw it away, I guess. Like, I whatever. They're like, ah, we it's, want something uh, else instead. It's $10 plus my DoorDash fee. Who cares? Uh, I don't know. Wow. Kate, let me really quickly ask you, how do tips work with DoorDash? I'm not entirely sure, but the way she's explained it to me, because I haven't seen the numbers, but um, she's guaranteed a certain amount to be earned on each delivery. And if she gets tipped over that amount, she gets to keep any difference. So she any she gets overage. her guarantee plus anything over that she gets. Okay. And so, you know, she's been doing pretty good on it. You know? That's cool. That's what, I've heard people do pretty good, but the very first time I used it, I left a tip for the delivery person. We ordered it at work, and it was a fairly big order. And I left a good tip, I thought, and he texted me on my cell phone and like reamed me. Oh. And he was like, thanks a lot for the for not tipping or something. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I was like, no, I tipped you. I tipped you was well. Was it DoorDash or Uber Eats? It was DoorDash. Because mm. I know there and, was a big... And then he did a... He was just like, sorry, ma'am, or something. But I was just like, whoa. So you left a good tip. Like, are you talking like... 20%, 10%, 15%? I usually, I usually minimum do 18, and that's if I get yeah. bad service. But I usually verge on the 20% side for how, everything. How long yeah, ago for was this? Mm. Like more than six months ago? A little more than six months so ago. So I know yeah. that there was something, Probably and I thought, it, I thought it was Uber Eats that had this, but maybe it was DoorDash. There was a lot of controversy about how the tip systems work. So maybe Because some company, it. it was either Uber Eats or DoorDash, was keeping extra tips. That's what he kind of made it sound like. So and so I was like, is, well, then I'm not going to tip anymore. Know, like, But then I haven't done DoorDash since then. Thanks, I, jacked. thanks to Twitter, that all got changed because, you know, people love to have so Twitter stuff. So the company was keeping the tips that people yeah. were... And I don't know if it was DoorDash or yeah. Uber Eats, but one of them so was sad. like it. Jeez. And so so what mom, maybe whatever I ordered through. I thought it was DoorDash, yeah. but... Well, that's that's fascinating. So we talked about cookies last week. We had... <laughs> Some we had our friends on. We all talked about that. Um, I think people were kind of busy for the holidays this week. Go check it out. The last week's episode it was kind of fun. We talked about um, growing up here <laughs> in Salt Lake City, uh, South Jordan. You get yeah, an idea of what I, it's like. I think it was just you know just the Christmas week. People have better things to do than to listen to us talk about cookies or whatnot. But it's getting better. We're at eighty five subscribers now. So. <laughs> but we're at thirteen hundred on Instagram. So it's like. Okay, there's, Where are they at? There's 1,215 <laughs> people that need to go subscribe to YouTube or at least go watch it. A lot, yeah. Well, you know yeah. what it is, is everybody comes, subscribes on Instagram because they want to get those, those, those giveaways. giveaways. Yeah, those giveaways are going on. So right now, so we did announce the Best Buy winner last week. We announced um, her. Was that and person local? Yeah. Yeah, a little Finally. more local. So that person we're going to meet up with and we'll post that. And then um, we're currently doing the Simply Tie $100 gift card giveaway. So this is going to be the last gift card giveaway of the four weeks. And then we still have the big AirPod Pro giveaway. We're not to 10K. We kind of stalled. You were 600 away this morning. So we were pretty ambitious. It looked like it was going to happen, but it kind of slowed down. But we'll we'll see. I'm looking forward to our new practice. It's a busy time of year. I think you need to repost it and just remind people that that's still out there. We'll do it. Um, because when you posted it the first time, you got a good little bump in mm-hmm. uh, subscribers and, yeah. Yeah. or followers. I got to get my terminology right on Instagram. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I looked this morning because I was curious. I was like, how close are we? And you were at you were at 93, 95, mm-hmm. so you're 605 away. We'll get there eventually. But, yeah, so that's it's fun. I mean, again, at the end of the day, it's it was just a personal goal. It's not like I have to do it, but... You know, for me, it's I'm trying to grow, quote unquote, organic. I don't know if you want to call these gift card things organic, but it's people but you're that not follow me. Like Russian followers. And yeah, so. yeah, these are real people, but people are following me, and then they refer their friends. You know, so that's all it is. It's just trying to get more exposure locally. You know. So my um, cousin went to get her nails done by a friend of hers. They she does hair, and they were trading nails and hair. And she said, "Does your grandma have a twin?" <laughs> She was like, what? <laughs> She's like, well, it's either your grandma or it is someone that looks just like her. And so she pulled up a picture and she's like, is this your grandma? And she's like, yeah, that's my grandma. And she was like, what? I follow this plastic surgeon on Instagram <laughs> and I'm obsessed with him. <laughs> and your grandma was with him on Christmas Eve. <laughs> and like, she was like, that's so funny. It was funny. So, so she my cousin knows. was she like, yeah. 
Wait, she didn't know. Well, she didn't know that Mindy's. Okay. That so I'm married to Mindy, who's okay. cousins with her. Yeah. Okay. She didn't realize that Mikkel was Got Mindy's it. cousin. Mikkel and that we were had related. a relation to Jerry. That's so funny. That's funny. She just knew my, she followed this. My favorite surgeon. thing is when people message me and they'll say, My son or slash my daughter would love for you to do this fill in the blank TikTok dance. <laughs> And I have so many people there. Like they'll message me, say, "My kids love." They'll tag us. Love... They tag me and yeah, you. Yeah, I get and tagged time. You guys Please do this one. Because they know that's they yeah. know that you're how to get through to Jerry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I actually yeah. can respond. But no, I love it. I love when people are like, "Yeah, please do these TikToks," because I love. It's so fun. Like even tonight, Tate and I did a couple. And... You know what I was thinking on the way over here? We should uh, film a special TikTok that only appears in the video podcast. So it doesn't show up on your TikTok so you account, it. so that you we can like do a little glimpse of it on your IG story Ooh. or something. But they can only watch the full version. Oh, we'll have if, to watch. And the we'll fun. just put it like right in the middle, so <laughs> somewhere. <they> gotta <laughs> scan somewhere. It's Where like those it? kids, those kids YouTube videos. They say that like yeah. all of a sudden something creepy pops into the middle. It's a creepy TikTok. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> something well, the other thought I had, and um, you know, you guys can comment below on if you're on YouTube. Or you can DM me if you're listening to this on Insta or iTunes. Um, I want to do an event. So probably around the time of our grand opening for our new location, which we're going to talk about in a second here, um, in Draper. So we're in our new practice in Draper. And um, my thought was is have a day where everyone comes and I do TikToks with people. But it's Like a meet and greet. Yeah. But it's a TikTok. So this girl, great. this uh, I thought it was because this girl, Charlie D'Amelio or something, she's like 15. <laughs> she is like the she's biggest. Huge she's on huge. TikTok. She has like eight or nine or 10 million followers. I remember when I first saw her first video when she became popular, she did the Renegade dance. Um, she had like, I don't know, like 10,000 followers. And she's like up to eight or nine million. And this is like within like a month and a half, dude. She is now like one of the, she's the biggest person. And so she did a and meet so she and, did a meet and greet. Yeah, thing. but it's she cool. Charged she charged people. charged people, but all the money went to charity. Nice. So what she charged went, it was to not keep it. So my thought is, is um, doing something like that where I don't know if we'll charge, but like, we'll just say like five bucks or something, but we're going to donate it to somewhere cool. That'd be awesome. A cool cause. And then people can come and we can do a TikTok together. It can be a, if the dance they like, I can pick on these pretty quickly. I'm telling you right now, I, all these dances I do, I learn in about three to five minutes. I'm terrible. So well, we're I not, throw we're not even going to talk about my my trials of that. You <laughs> no, know. You the good. only <laughs> one, yeah, the only one I'm having a hard time with is um, if you've seen, go look at the Jabberwockies. Um, they have a, it's called the Bop. The Bop dance. Yeah. Oh, dude, I've it been, is hard, but it is a sweet a, move. So you know, because I'm managing <laughs> the boom, boom, managing boom, boom. the Chittister mm. YouTube account and yeah. then my own account. Yeah. And whatever you watch on any given account, then it recommends more videos. So mm. I happen to look at a Jabberwockies video yeah. on the Chittister account. And so now every time I log into it, it's like Jabberwockies bop, Jabberwockies oh, bop. Yeah, and so, so many. Like, like, everybody wants to right the bop. Yeah. Because yeah. it's the baby. So, but yeah, the baby, even that's the baby, that song is so cool. Like that part where they do that move. Jabberwockies. I've been obsessed with the Jabberwockies since they, they came that, on the scene on MTV's uh, yeah. dance tryout. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that's and what then I first they have, saw. I've been wanting to go to their show in Vegas for so Are long. Are they still doing oh, it? I didn't yeah. know they were I would in love Vegas. to go yeah, see they that. They have a residency. They're amazing. They're, they're that's just, cool. You know what it is? It's those. It's the, the mystery of those masks. Yeah. And they all have gloves on. You so can't cool. see... You can't see one thing of skin. Yeah. And so it just gives this different so aura cool. about them so that cool. no other dance groups can match. Yeah. And they're just so coordinated and talented. It's awesome. But yeah, so that was my thought is to have a day around the time of the grand opening event where people come and we'll do it ahead of time. So we'll announce it. People can kind of mail in and we get an idea of what people want to do so we can be ready and we can then we can film it and they can post it on their TikTok. I'll put it on mine, whatever. We'll put it on a special YouTube episode, Chit Chow Chitty, whatever. We'll put a bunch of them. So, yeah, but that, that's what we're looking forward to. Okay, so let's talk about that. Um, in the last week, uh, I left, you know, I mean, this has been going on for some time now, but I left my previous job or my previous location to start our own, our own practice. Many reasons for it, um, but in the end, you know, my whole goal is to build a culture and an environment where we're going to thrive. And Mindy has been by my side from the beginning, even at the our first location and even through all training. Um, but I think we really have an awesome opportunity here to have a, a nice, small, but tight-knit group 
we all have similar goals in mind and we just really, really want to provide just the most amazing experience for patients that are seeking out plastic surgery. And not just, you know, a, a, aesthetic cosmetic, but reconstruction, hands. So I do all of it. And I think this is our opportunity to do it. And so we're excited for this. And it's been coming, you know, for some time. We've had such great support from you guys. So we really appreciate it. All the DMs, the texts, everything. You guys have been so supportive. So thank you. And it's all come together, you know, my boards, I got certified for the American Board of Plastic Surgery, um, the new practice, you know, the new year, it's just, everything's happening at once. It's been some of the best and some of the worst times of <laughs> our lives. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. You hear about, you know, there's always like a, a kind of equal or polar opposite to whatever emotions you're going through. And we've definitely had both ends at the same time um, or in the same day, multiple times. And I think to illustrate how crazy it is right now, we are filming this at 1130 at night on a Friday. Yeah, Friday night. Uh, because you're just, you're so busy. And I honestly, like, I, I know you want to do these, but at the same time, I feel guilty about <laughs> prodding you. Like, well, do you want to no. film it here? Do you want to film it? Because like, I know you have more important things to do than film this podcast. Um, I enjoy it. Though. You know, I know you do, and it's, but it's just at the same time, I'm so cognizant of mm -hmm. that crazy schedule you guys are living right now that I feel bad. I'm like, well, no, you're if awesome. You don't want I to, then that's fine. I'll just sit <laughs> home. <laughs> no, I really pre we appreciate it for doing it and yes. keeping me on track because I'm kind of like one of those lemmings. You know, like I I do <laughs> like I try to triage what comes in, but sometimes I just get I'm just doing what's in front of me. You know, like in front of my eyes, like you know, literally someone was here in a minute ago on our. On our on ottoman, ottoman, I was here. suturing their child's face because they split it open, and that's kind of what delayed it. <laughs> so, you know, this stuff happens. I mean, at one point, Ron also had that. We came over <laughs> and we sutured him, you know. So um, once we're in our new office space, I'd probably just take people over there. It's a little easier. But, How you know, many have I... have done here in this house? Three? Uh, three or four. I don't know. I, I don't know. I lose count. I just... I, but I told Ron, it's just literally... I, it doesn't bother me. It just... It literally happens you know, at least once a day. Well, <laughs> Not that I'm suturing faces once a day, and when, but that someone has something. You know, yesterday was my, a fingernail that was had a hematoma, you know, and I just try to help people. When I cracked my you face open, I honestly didn't expect you to work on it. I just wanted, I just wanted to see what you would say of whether, like, I wasn't going to put stitches on anything. I was going <laughs> to put super glue and a Band-Aid on it and be good. <laughs> yeah, but look how good it looks, man. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure it does. Great. But I wasn't like, it would have looked terrible if you just hard. put, so I wasn't yeah, telling great. you that I did it. So that I was like, oh, I hope Jerry can work on it so I don't have to go to the hospital because like, but now going forward, knowing that of that last experience, like, I'm just not going to tell you next time because <laughs> you get too many of these, hey, can you look at this? Hey, can you fix this real quick? And like, your little spare time you have, like, it kind of sucks that you have to do spend working on friends' faces. <laughs> I mean, it's part of, I mean, you're right. I, I don't know. Maybe some people don't do this at all, but like, I feel like it's That's part, part of, of what I signed up for. Into. Yeah. I mean, I signed up for this. You know, I, I chose to be a plastic surgeon and when I'm on call and I haven't slept all night, like I can't blame anybody about myself. Like I signed I up for a call. Of that sometimes too. I decided to do this. So I, I yeah, she has to remind me. But I you do it doesn't up for I do get grumpy when I haven't slept in forty two hours, but you know. As you should. My body starts to shut down. But yeah, you know, we do these podcasts and you know, maybe eighteen people watch it, but um, 107 the week before. I know, so. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, we really appreciate you guys. And thank you. There's people that mess me like, oh, we watch every week. And I know this is not probably the most like entertaining thing for you guys. Um, but we, what I want to at least accomplish with this is I want you guys to, for one, kind of know who Mindy and I and Ron are. Like, you know, what are, and a lot of people, I have people messing me saying, you know what, like, you guys are real. Like, you know, when I meet you in person in your office, like you're the same person I see you on your TikToks, your your podcasts, your I, you know, whatever. I act a little more professional in real life. <laughs> you're the same. I'm the exact same. <laughs> I literally, this is me. Well, you know, and I've been, I've been like sometimes I, I, sh I worry about the content. I'm like, oh, I, I, like I want to come up with something that is entertaining or interesting. But then I try to think back to when we first started this, I was like, people want to watch or listen to this just because they want to get any kind of insight into you. Cause they like your personality, they like you as a person. And, uh, what I relate that to is there's a podcast that I listen to, mm -hmm. um, where they just, they don't talk about anything specific. They just kind of recap what they've happened the past week. So you're saying it's like a millennial Seinfeld. Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> which I will so, go back to is what this when is. No, these guys started their we'll podcast. Listen to episode one, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> I think episode two is the is the Seinfeld the picture. One. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, when these guys started their podcast, like it was the same thing. Like they're like, we have nothing to talk about. But I was listening to it because. I just like that tiny bit of insight into their regular life. And I mm-hmm. think the people that do listen or watch this, it's the same thing. Like, even if we don't necessarily think it's super entertaining, like, I think those people are paying attention because they just want to hear you talk. Even well, if it's sometimes about. Sometimes I think nothing. we might have more fun than the people listening. This is fine. In the day, this is fine. I like I like just chill and talking, and you know? This is good for decompressing. When, when we're 90 years old, yeah. we're going to have this footage to look back Be at. Like, like, Look at how... I wish Ron would have got the audio <laughs> right for the first 12 episodes. <laughs> Ron, you've done such a great job. Don't... Yeah, this, I don't ever the audio, the audio on this I wish Jerry wouldn't have been be eating so chips in the first Yeah, this is going to be like Dolly Atmos, 64 yeah. speakers surround. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, chips. Oh, yeah. Where's speaking my chips? Of, speaking oh, of that, Can you go Dolby. grab those chips? You know those, no, those super flavorful bag of chips right that we you aren't sponsored by, but you can buy at Harmon's, which I'm also not sponsored <laughs> by Harmon's. So speaking of the Dolby, that, <laughs> yeah. that video, that the little intro I did for you, yeah, they're, part of the end of Ooh. that sound is from Dolby's. Oh, shh, don't tell them. I thought my I brother, no, that I dude, your brother, he's the, the, that outro the first is half so of it, the first sick. half of it is it's so good. Is, is a common mm-hmm. common use sound. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but like, there's a small tidbit that overlays it at the cool. end. That sounds is amazing. different than the chit chat with Chitty mm. sound. Um, that, that sounds cool. I went onto YouTube and I was like, I, I looked for all the uh, movie theater intros. Yeah. Because I was like, there was a certain sound I wanted there. And mm-hmm. so that one I, I ended up picking it. from Dolby. That's so cool. So. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, go look on my Instagram wall. Ron took the logo that my brother in law, Bren, put together, which we I love, you know, using again the Fibonacci sequence, the golden ratio proportions, which is funny. I had actually a few friends text me pictures of like an episode from South Park where <laughs> there's like a truck that has that, a, it's a similar logo, it has like three circles in it. I mean, essentially, there are circles all over society and in culture so well the circle of life i mean yeah, everything exactly. in life so, is about a circle it's just so. funny that people keep messaging which is fine i don't care I, uh, that means I'm people are paying brian, attention brian and chris as much <laughs> as i love them they're troublemakers trolls. they're trolls they are they're, 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 they're lifetime you know trolls like anytime <laughs> anytime i watch a, a, a sports game that's really meaningful to me yeah i know chris <laughs> Is just waiting to text me something, and Chris will try calling me sometimes in those games. <laughs> he just ignore and him. I just ignore him because I know he's trolling. And Brian, Such the same trolls. way, they love, yeah, they love they're to like get a ride epitome of there. trolls. They do. Yeah, they're hilarious. Well, okay, so you mentioned a second ago talking about people. Some people just want to hear us like word vomit, but my what my thought is, and Ron and I talked about this. Ron brought this up, and I, Mindy and I talked about doing something like this a while back, and even Ron is that we are going to do aside from this chit chat with chitty under our youtube a reality kind of a reality show or reality video clips so, of yeah, kind me of a and mindy like a, a vlog of- yeah a vlog mm-hmm. of us setting up a practice and what it's like to be a plastic surgeon like myself in utah and i think like it'd be what- fun to document what yeah. I like really think of when I do this, and I know this might sound corny and it might not even real world. It might not even sound <laughs> under uh, relatable to a really young audience, Laguna Hills. but the not the hill, Laguna the hills. Beach, Laguna Beach. So when that show came out, like you know, they, was that you, the first one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was before the hills. But the like original. I loved, I loved how it kind of. It basically was mm-hmm. a week long. Like, like it was time. what happened yeah. over a week, yeah. and it was all these different pockets of friends. And so like for you, I kind of. I, I don't think daily is feasible with your schedule and editing, but I yeah, think like on your work schedule. capturing <laughs> like the typical week for you guys mm-hmm. into like a 10 to 15 minute little show that we can put on YouTube. Yeah. I think would be, be super fascinating that, yeah. you know, you're going to get like everything that happens on a Monday is not mm-hmm. going to be in there, but just these little clip, you know, tidbits yeah. of what it's like. Well, for like you today guys. we recorded, he recorded the whole way. We were just talking on the drive over to try and get some numbing medicine for this child. So um, yeah, that was like fifteen minutes. But like, yeah. if we get more footage, yeah, I imagine we, can we clip only that get like thirty and... seconds out of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna do that, and I think it's gonna be interesting. I want people on various like groups and levels to watch it. Mainly, one people that follow me get an idea of what it's like to be in this situation um two people that are maybe other plastic surgeons 
kind of trying to maybe figure out on their, on their own, starting a practice and what to do and not to do from our experience. And three, people that are in, you know, deciding if they want to be a plastic surgeon as well. You know, so, you know, people in the field, people not in the field, people in medicine, whatever it is, just an opportunity to kind of see like what it's like, you know, because like you watch the shows like Botched and like Dr. Now to know. I mean, dude, like, it's just all fake. Well, not fake, but like it doesn't really show what's going on, you know? The problem is you don't know what is fake versus what's not because you know yeah. the fact that it's on the network. Mm-hmm. It's scripted to some degree. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And you just can't and tell the difference. And, yeah. And so it's like, you know, I think what I want to show, mm-hmm. what I want to be able to document document from your guys' daily and weekly lives is like real. Like there's nothing. It's not like, oh, hey, Jerry, uh, yeah. say that again. Yeah. Oh, Mindy, uh, do this again. Like, yeah. we just, it's going to be like, we're cops. not going to get, it's going to be filtered <laughs> to some be. degree that we're going to have to block out names <laughs> or identities. Like, yeah. we're not, it's no not going to just gonna be completely raw access, but at the same time, it's not going to be scripted. Yeah. yeah it's going to be like cops meets um, Laguna Hills <laughs> Beach. <laughs> Laguna Beach cops. So we're going to be rolling in my car <laughs> most of the time talking. And Ron's going to move into my house. Oh. He's abandoning his family for the next year. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, they don't live too far away. That thing's. I was thinking yeah, about. Sure. I was thinking about taking the, uh, a thing on. Oh shoot! Yeah, good Is thing that? that's why we got this okay. one. But I was thinking about taking a sabbatical. So. That oh sweet! There you go. We got the dog basement where the dogs used to live. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you can sleep in uh, Miley's bunk bed. So yeah, I think that's gonna be fun. It may cause strife, but you know, again, we are working on some other things with networks, and I think this is actually like a better way to go for now because we can be in control of it. We don't have to be manipulated by what's said or, you know, what's asked and then how it's portrayed, yeah. like well, you said. And with your schedule so hectic too, like if you had a real film crew from a network or mm-hmm. whatever, mm-hmm. they're going to be trying to dictate your schedule and that yeah. would just cause more stress for you. Yeah, totally. So we'll see how this goes. Ron, you know, he has, he has a full-time job and he has a family, so we get that as well. <laughs> so we're respectful of that. But yeah, if it works out, we're recording, you know, a little bit of time a week and he may come by the office, may come by, you may want him on call, you can come with me. So that's exciting. And then our, if our business, so just so you guys know, our address is 11762 South State Street, Suite 333. So it's a lucky number, 333. And it's in Draper, Utah, 84020. Is there a good picture I can find online or something that I can throw in the... the yeah, let me look. It's, so it's at Canyon Crest is the name of the building. So it's Canyon, Canyon Crest, Crest Medical. Medical. But it, within Canyon Crest, the building, there is a full OR. It's Canyon Crest Surgical. That's four ORs. Four OR, fully accredited, awesome facilities. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I can do everything there. The I can do anything hand. has extra... Everything there is awesome. So I think Aesthetic. this is the thing about your new business that will probably people probably need a better understanding of because even myself I mm-hmm. think I know but it's still it, it's definitely different than the structure at form so you're in your own practice and there's like six other plastic surgeons that have their own practices and you guys kind of share um, the operating rooms and just pay a certain percentage of thing like mm-hmm. tell us a little more about how that works so people have yeah and there's some details that i'm still working on that may alter a little bit how it is but essentially i have my own solo practice like you said so there, well there's six oh there's six, six plastic, plastic surgeons. surgeons not including jerry already in the building yeah four of them are in one practice together two are in the same office space together but they're not partners they're more like associates i'm not really sure like exactly how that works mm-hmm. And then he will be in his completely own office space. Upstairs, yeah. Upstairs. Yeah. Um, but one of the, the main group there, so this is like, you know, the whole, and I talked, because I, I've known a few of the guys, the plastic surgeons in this group for a while, and I've been talking to them. And, you know, our goal is to create kind of a one-stop like a shop, mecca. a mecca of plastic surgery. You know, there's a place in Houston that's like this. There's a couple places in the country where there's just like 15 20 plastic surgeons in, in one, one facility mm-hmm. and all these patients come there and it's very efficient because everyone in the building knows plastic surgery all the nurses everyone top to bottom it's what they do so i would think that this would create some kind not not bad conflict but just like uh competition mm-hmm. like how does it i almost feel like people wouldn't want to have a big old conglomerate of plastic surgeons like the houston example you gave because 
that might make it more difficult for you to do your business? Um, do they have different specialties think, or how does Yeah, that so part of it is I think every person has that because not all plastic surgeons are created equal or or have the same interests, right? So plastic surgery is so broad, you know, head to toe, like, you know, facial plastics, breast, body. Aesthetic reconstruction. Uh, yeah, there's so there's... much um, that everyone has their own little, like, area of plastics that they kind of stick to. Like you some know? people really would prefer to not do breasts and they prefer yeah. to do rhinoplasties. Yeah. Or Some people have just really nailed the facelift. Like, Some yeah. people have really nailed the tummy tuck. Or liposuction. You know, so everyone's a little different, right? And even in that current situation, that's, you know, me kind of talking to them and going there. That was one thing I think that I appreciated because one, they, you know, everyone does get along and I, I thought, I didn't know how that would work, but they do and they make it work and, you know, they're all very busy, you know, and so... I think though being like for me as a plastic surgeon, being surrounded and having colleagues where they're all very experienced in their field, where they're really good at what they do and they're very well respected in the community and they get along and drama wise is pretty minimal, you know, like that's, that's what I was drawn to. You know, I want to be that. I want to have that collegiality. I want to be able to be like, Hey, you bounce know, ideas off of each yeah, other. Like, and hey, what about this? And they may say, well, I tried that once, you know? And so like, or here's a new thing. And so just sharing ideas and doing things where I couldn't do that before, you know, it's kind of like I was all by myself. And so there, there's a benefit here where I have my own solo practice. And even that group, they kind of advertise and do their own things, but they are kind of a group of plastic surgeons, but they all each do their own thing. But to have all seven plastic surgeons there, I mean, yeah, like it's to me, yeah, I see what you're saying, but it's actually pretty awesome because people all come in there and they all know that place. And it's very well known. It's very efficient. And there's well, a full spa so there. So even like your mom's restaurant, for example, mm -hmm. when she first opened it in, what, 2007? Mm -hmm. there, that whole area now that has like Nordstrom Rack and all those restaurants, those weren't there. That mm -hmm. whole big area now off of 114th, that wasn't there. So there was a lot fewer restaurants. But as there's become more restaurants around her restaurant it actually has brought more people that there because yeah. people come to the restaurants and one might be too busy so they go there or one might mm -hmm. you know they'll be like oh actually thai food sounds really good do you know like it just draws more people and someone mm -hmm. may come to say see jerry or and like they may come there for jerry but maybe like the fit is not right yeah mm -hmm. and then they can just go to one of the other six right. or they I may come say, to one of the other that's six, actually already happened yeah, yeah so but I may, sense. yeah, and I may even say, look, like, you know, I don't do, I mean, I do that, but if you want, like, the top notch person, like, that guy, yeah. he does it, you know, and I would refer that him because yeah. I want the best for, you know, my potential patients or my patients, or even and, if they are like my patients. Like you said, though, I it does say, need to be a great fit. The, the patient needs to feel comfortable with their surgeon. Yeah, you want that's, that. Yeah. Like, you want that for your patient. I tell them that. You want to feel comfortable with your patient, too. You want to make sure yeah. that you're communicating well, and sometimes yeah. it just doesn't and happen. And I, I, from the beginning, when a patient comes in for the first time, I say, look, and I'll always say, like, have you seen anybody else? Not because I, I don't care. I have no jealousy. I have not probing, but I want to know, because if they've seen six other plastic surgeons, well, then they obviously haven't found the person that's the fit for them. Right. And whether they pick me or somebody else, that's up to them. But I tell them, like, look, I want to be able to meet your expectations. And I want to be able to provide you what you are wanting to achieve. If I don't think I can achieve that, then I'm not going to lie to you and say that I can. I'd refer you to somebody else, you know. And so, because, again, same thing is I can't do everything. I can do most things. But, yeah, like, I have, I know my capacity and my limitations. And I'm honest with my patients about that, you know. So what, uh, and maybe you don't know this, um, but were, was this group, um, were they looking for another plastic surgeon to come in or did they just, were they specifically wanting you to come in because of how your skill set may mesh with theirs? Like how did that dynamic come about? Yeah, the, la the latter, like you said. Um, yeah, we went to a dinner and they said they weren't looking to bring someone on at the time. So I asked them like, well, then why open this opportunity up for him? And they said, when you find someone and their your personalities mesh, you grab them. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And it's kind of like you load the bus and then you figure it out later where to sit, you know? Yeah. And I, 
I, I, at first, and I'll be honest, I actually met with this group before I came to Salt Lake City. They were actually the reason I came out here yeah, to look I for a job. I was in San Francisco. I really, got in Salt Lake. really, really liked them too. And so it was a hard decision I made Very hard. at the time. And, you know, maybe some people might say I made the wrong decision. I don't think so. I think there was a reason I yeah. chose where we went and I grew and I learned a lot. So I have no regrets there. But um, I'm glad now that I'm back in an opportunity where I get to at least be with them and be closer to them. Well, and, and I think it, them, it works so. out. I think it works out for them too because now, you know, you you're coming in this time or at this point more seasoned. Yeah, you know, and yeah. so you have all these board business, certified. You have all these business experiences I'm, that you didn't have yeah. that yeah. you got in training. Like you had all the surgical experience, but not the business experience. Right. And now mm-hmm. you're you're gonna just fit in easier, and it's just gonna be so much better for everybody. Yeah, I really like all of them. Like I really They're respect them. Great. Really like them. Great. People. It's just been very nice. And then even the the OR, so like the people that run the OR, they are incredible at oh. Canyon Crest Surgical. I like I feel like I told um I, I won't say names because I haven't asked their permission, but like the head person she, she kinda runs it and then the head over nursing, like I told them today, I feel like I've known them for years. Like I haven't. And they've followed me on social media, they told me, and so that's probably why they probably know me because they've just seen me. But I really told them today, like, because they've just been... It's a relationship that clicked. Yeah, it just clicked right away with them. Mm-hmm. And they've just been amazing and helping us, you know, get out of a situation and helping us kind of transition to this new one and helping us. We have so many cases we're trying to book. Like, literally, it's it's insane. Yeah. And they've been so accommodating. It's been awesome. All right, let's just put them, every all the other surgeons on notice now that they're, we're going <laughs> to schedule them for the podcast at some point. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll get them on here. That would be really I cool. I think for sure, for sure one would yeah. come on. Oh, totally. Yeah, one of my, yeah, I've known him for a while. He's really good. He's actually the one that got me there, and I appreciate that. So mm-hmm. I, like I said, I very much respect them. I'm really excited to be there. Um, out of 35 job offers I had, in the last two and a half months, um, you know, for all over up and down Utah. And mind you, these offers came, I didn't announce that I was, yeah, I didn't solicit these. Yeah. So we didn't apply. Anywhere. It was like we getting phone calls out. and messages from people I didn't I know. And I, that was awesome because I got to meet a lot of people that were amazing too. that. I never knew a lot of plastic surgeons, a lot of people that own spas, hospital groups and things. And it I was think great. What's important is that you're not, you're not saying those numbers in any way trying to brag like you're no. just trying to like you're just trying to set the scene of what happened and i think that really speaks to how respected you are as a surgeon that there's all these people that want to hire you or want you to come work with them or in whatever capacity and so you know and i, I think everybody that follows you and all your patients you've had they you hear the same thing consistently, just like mm-hmm. everybody is amazed by your work. They actually just you know. wanted me to be around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they true. wanted some crumble cookies. They, yeah. like, they know you always have the supply of No, I, you're, I agree. And what it made me realize... <laughs> I have sent crumble cookies in <laughs> to their offices. It just made me you. realize there's so many nice, good people out there because they're like... Really? It was kind of like a stand like, hey, we're, we'd love to help you. You know, it wasn't even like... And some of them were like, oh, come work with me. It was more like, hey... If you need a space to work for some time, you're more than welcome. I mean, people were so nice offering me, like, if you need some temporary space, you don't have to pay me. You can come and, you know, I'm like, you have such a nice facility. Like, I can't do that. Even, like, the group right now that I'm going to be in this building, they've been offering me space so that I can see. And, like, I feel so grateful. I am the type of person, though, I'm very, like, considerate. I, you know, I don't want to, like, step on toes. I don't want to, like, overstep bounds or overuse anything. Or so we're trying to be very respectful, but or... they've been so nice. You know, like, Cause they realize that I have patients that need to be seen and treated timely and they've been so helpful. So, so understanding and well, it's been know, amazing. I think they know too. It's, it's an investment for them to mm-hmm. accommodate you at this time in this transition. Like it's only going to benefit them down the road as well. So I think, yeah, I think we everyone, so, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's, that's the goal, you know? So I think I want it to benefit everybody, you know, cause in the, the day, like, you know, it's not about me. It's not about even them individually. It's about our patients, but as a group being able to, you know, provide that for our patients, mm-hmm. the right services. So, well, today we went and we tried, to, we had a contractor lined up to come and look at our new <laughs> space because we have some really fun ideas to transform the space. It's set up as a clinic right now, but it definitely needs a, yeah, it wasn't a, a quote unquote facelift. <laughs> um, Tommy Tech. 
Yeah, <laughs> it, it needs a mommy makeover. <laughs> so we went and we tried to get in and our key won't work. So that was fun. We tried five keys, seven keys. Yeah. None of them worked. Well, so we just got to talk outside the door to the contractor. That was part of our reality show. Well, you I know, know. That, that's, that's what I was thinking. I was like, I should have filmed it. your dad couldn't it. find his key tonight, given that you guys yeah. couldn't find your key today. It's like all it's day. Not the day no for keys. No one can find yeah. keys. Hopefully I'll be able to get so in my house. Get in. Yeah. <laughs> Can you get in? You might have to come back here tonight. I got the app on my phone that opens the garage. Oh, so oh, worst nice. case scenario, if I lose my keys. I didn't know that yeah. was a thing. So there was apps. So what you realize is like, you know, everything is not on our timeline. You know, yeah. I've just noticed, I've realized that in the last two weeks, you know, nothing happens on my timeline or how I think it's going to happen. You've just now realized that. Yeah. Well, you got board certified how you thought it would happen. So I didn't think Even it was going to happen. Was, I'll oh, be honest. No, on. not not from the perspective of, like that, but everything that was going on around it that was trying to distract me was what I thought would put me in a mind frame where I wasn't able to um, fully um, do my boards to the best of my ability. In the time that I've I have that ability, you, I mean, I'm board certified. I've but. never once seen you fail at something that you had put in time and effort to. Like everything I agree. I've observed, now maybe I haven't seen everything, but everything I've observed from the end of undergrad to now. <laughs> Okay, you when you've put your time and energy into it, you've come out on top and at the very tip top, the top point one percent of the top. So I was never worried, but again, He's I right. didn't I didn't have the I didn't have the insights of this process. So I, you know, I that could be over optimism, friendly optimism, but you know well, I always... fully expected you to pass the first time. <laughs> and I think was it was it the video uh, of you announcing it that you got emotional? Mm -hmm. Like I was like choking up watching it i'm like and i said to the tab like oh man this made me tear up yeah, <laughs> watching right. you tear up because like you could feel it you could feel the authenticity of your emotions in that video mm -hmm. and i think again another and thing of what people, <laughs> another thing of what people love about you yeah and why they're watching right now because he's real yeah 100 100 <laughs> percent no i mean because yeah like i was very emotional one it's like such a huge thing that took so long to get to this point you know and um but just like i said everything else that was going on that i can't talk about but that was happening at the same time you know it was just so much emotion coming together and like you know sometimes you feel that as much as you're surrounded by people that want you to succeed there are people that don't want you to succeed and want you to fail and i've never in my life ever wanted someone else to fail at anything you know, like if anything, I would go out of my way to help them succeed, you know, even if it meant putting me out, you know. And so it was hard for me to think of people that are out there that could potentially like almost take joy in watching someone fail or not pass something, you know. And so just for me, it was redeeming. And I'm not I'm not assuming anything about anybody. I'm just saying I, there's people out there that, <laughs> you know, just That's what are that way, you know. Haters going to hate. Yep. Yeah, there are. There's haters out there. And and unfortunately, you know, I think the more people know you and that stuff, like there's more haters, right? There's more trolls, yeah. there's more haters, and kind of the that's bigger part you of get, it. the bigger your audience, the more yeah, the more audience, the more people, more opinions, and that's fine. People are entitled to their own opinions, and well, I get that. The, you look at the most successful people in the world at anything that are in the limelight frequently, and as much adoration as they have from people like there is almost an equal amount mm -hmm. of people that For are sure. just hating just ripping them you know apart. And you just yep. have to look mm -hmm. at the trending trending twitter page every day oh, yeah. and just see like i look and read some of this and i'm <laughs> like do you guys have nothing better to do yeah. like okay i get maybe this mistake happened but like is it worth taking your time out to put your mm -hmm. two cents in the world that you don't agree with it it's like yeah, yeah. it's like go find something more productive to do yeah I still, my philosophy still goes from back when I was little watching Bambi. Like, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Yeah, like, exactly. It's not going to get you ahead in the world to be mean. Yeah, uh, yeah. Putting other people down or bullying people, like, what, what does that do? I, I don't know. It's, you know, it's sad. But anyway, that's why I was so emotional that day because everything just kind of came together and, you know, and in, in that moment, it just seemed like everything was right. And then, you know, things get crazy again. You you're a person, you prepare as hard as you can, as best as you can. Oh, I don't know what I'm trying to say. So you prepare for success, but you prepare yourself emotionally and mentally 
for failure. For failure. Yeah, I always do a that phrase. I can't think. Yeah, of right what is now. the phrase? It's it's, a, it's, it's prepare for it's success. Midnight. Something else for failure. It's mm-hmm. uh, what is? It's another p word. It's alliteration. I can't think of what it is though. Someone put it in the comments so we can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Try and Google it. No, you're right. I mean, so that's the thing. Like my boards, I'm always, I always have like a contingency plan. You know, like because I want to. Yeah, like you said, prepare for it, but. If something happens, I'm ready to do it again. Like I'd be ready to go back and do my boards again. Plan for success, prepare for failure. That's what I just started putting in as plan for success. Yeah. So somehow I've heard that and I just subconsciously do it because that's all I always do. But even then I always have like, I'm reserved. I don't want to count my chicks before the eggs hatch or whatever this phrase is, you know? like Count Count your eggs before the before Count they hatch. chickens before they hatch. Yeah, right. You don't want to say you have yeah. ten chickens. Like yeah, well, you have ten mid- eggs, then like you have ten. Midnight. We can't think of I know. Yeah. phrases right now. <laughs> but yeah, these idioms and phrases and <laughs> alliterations and all that metaphors. Um, but yeah, so that's always my approach. And even you know, with like my new business and things, like you know, I have people message me, "Oh my gosh, you're going to do so well and stuff." And I, I love I love hearing words of affirmation. I love that. I love people that are positive. Um, I always just try. I'm a realist as well. I mean, like I'm, I'm an yeah. idealist, just, but I'm also just, a realist. <laughs> it doesn't just happen overnight. Like I think everybody believes you will be successful. I've always believed that you're going to be successful. Like I, I was scrolling through my Instagram, um, like looking back at my entire history of Instagram, mm-hmm. and I had come across a picture I took from the Airplane magazine. <laughs> oh in 2012. yeah, I think it. You, yeah, it was you, 2012, and it was best plastic surgeons in America. And I took a picture of it. I'm like, oh, this is going to be you one day, Jerry. Yeah, you put his <laughs> you head know? on. Yeah, yeah, one time you yeah. put my head yeah, on yeah, it, right? I <laughs> your head on one. So and, funny. And it's just because, you know, like we, to be everybody there. that knows you believes that that's what's going to happen. You can't but, be in those magazines if you're not board certified. Right. But, but at the same time, it's not going to just happen. Like you, yeah. you have to put in the hard work mm-hmm. for it. You have to put in the time and the energy. And I think that's what your preparing yourself to do now you're trying to put in the hard work because you know if you do that you most likely will be where you want to be at whatever point in the future yeah and the term you know the word best or top i mean i don't know but at the end of the day like i just want to be a plastic surgeon who does amazing work for their patients that cares about their patients that you know um can deliver and you know if yeah, stuff he, happens he doesn't then, lay you know, awake at night and it. think like oh how can i be the best well, it, he just, so it just happens too, like that yeah but, you can't it's hard to be but i want even the people that are considered the best in the industry like i'm yeah. sure jerry knows who's considered the top tier of, <laughs> yeah. of american surgeons but even that there's thousands and thousands like there's probably at least a hundred that are as good as each other and yeah. it's so like yeah exactly of course, yeah. Of course you're not going to think i want to be the best but to your point you just you want to feel prideful in your work. Yeah, you I want to do the sure best for my clients patients. Are happy. Yeah, he sets goals, and he they're big goals, and he achieves them. He works hard to achieve them. That's something that I've always admired about him since high school. Who paid you guys to say all this crap tonight? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I appreciate not it. you. Crumble. Crumble. We're not sponsored. Right? And cookies. I wish. I wish I had a, thousands of cookies sitting crumble, here. I've crumble, got a crumble, crumble. Whole um, bunch of cookies. I mean, if we keep saying it enough, eventually they'll yeah, have to right? sponsor. Crumble. You know. You know, I made. Can we get one. Sponsor? I made the song for Swig. <laughs> I made that oh, song yeah. for Swig, and I I thought like I I listed every <laughs> single drink and every Dang. single item of food they sold on their mm. menu in that song. Yeah. And I was like. Did you send I want, it to them? I didn't even want them to give me money. I just wanted them to play it in their stores. And you I didn't even do that. I tw- I tweeted at them and yeah. everything, and I never got a response. I'm like, all right, well, dude, put it on Instagram. Last time yeah. I, tag I, I, I did, but I'll, well, you know, they've changed their menu since I wrote That's that true. song. So I got. Yeah. I was thinking the other day, I was like, maybe go, I'll write it. Bleep out one. the old ones, and then <laughs> so <laughs> maybe it needs. Chris like, has it as his ringtone, so every time I call <laughs> him, he answers it like, like swig it up, swig it, swig it up. That's awesome. That's hilarious. Um, okay, I think we're getting tired, but you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, tonight was, again, just to recap, 
We're starting our new business, Jerry Chester MD, PLLC, Professional Limited Liability Corporation. Is that how we're going to have to answer the phone? No, just Jerry, Jerry Chester, Chester MD, MD PLLC, PLLC, Professional Liability. But we're excited. We're in Draper. We're going to be announcing our grand. We're going to have a grand opening. We're going to do this TikTok day. We're going to figure <laughs> out which um, charity or what um, you know thing we're going to go for. We're, we have more plans than we have time for the plans. Exactly. Like but I it's said, he sets these we goals. We set goals. It's going to happen. It's exhausting. Right? So here we are. His goals are exhausting. Started from the bottom. Now we're here. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and other big things are coming soon too. So we'll announce them as they happen. You guys, there's just so much going on. 2020 is going to be incredible. Because 2019 already our, ended on a bang. 20th anniversary, 20th high school anniversary. Yeah. So oh. Big year. So That's you're going to so show scary. up. You're going to show up to your high school reunion like a boss. Would you? <laughs> are you going to go to yours? I don't know a single person from my high school. Just come to ours. <laughs> What's dude. funny is I might <laughs> as well go to Bingham's. <laughs> you you know. You're hearing no more people at ours am, than there. I am. Yeah. That's come funny. on. Okay. We'll see. See, I wouldn't go if it was up to me. I don't even not know my if personality. there's going to be one. I haven't heard anything, so I'm sure there is. Somebody's put into something together. Yeah. I mean, but... We have, like, a whole Facebook group that I got added to. Mm-hmm. Quite a June few people. 6th. Oh, they got a date and everything? Mm-hmm. Where is it at? They're still deciding. Okay. It, it think, might be, it should at, be at Bingham. Bingham. Like, that's... That would yeah, they've the talked about other places, yeah. Especially because Bingham will be... School will be over. It's not like they'll be using yeah. it for anything. Well, they're trying to decide... And then, like, if it's going to be a family event so or just... 20 years. Yeah, because at 10 years... We went to the 10-year and the 5-year, right? Mm. I made you go. Yep. Can't, that's kind of lame that they had a 5-year, but... Yeah, they had a 5-year at a park, oh, remember? Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All five people showed up. Yeah, it was a good 20. <laughs> decent amount. I think we still lived here because I was in, were in med school. Well, yeah, that would have been 15 years ago. So yeah, we, wait, when was oh that? Oh, my gosh. 2004. Oh, no, I wasn't in med school yet. No. Still. Oh yeah, I was like doing nothing. <laughs> I was, well, I was working at the Apple Store probably five. Yeah, two thousand five. Yeah, yeah, two thousand two thousand five. So we'd been married for like a year and a half. Yeah, and I think I worked at the Apple Store. That's right. We had we been married downtown. a year and a half, and we were shocked we that University some Utah. people showed up in a minivan yeah, with multiple, like, like babies. Five kids. Babies. You know how it goes in Utah. As soon as you turn eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> you're married three months it later was crazy. and you have a baby nine months So many people that. from our school <laughs> married people in their grade or school. So for Mindy and I went to high school together, same grade. A lot of our friends married each other. Yeah. So kind of weird. And people always say like, you guys all married each other. Yeah. That's very true. I don't know why. Anyway, you guys, thank you for tuning in. I'm Jerry Chittister. Jerry Chittister, MD. I'm not a PLLC, but I do own a PLLC. <laughs> You guys, thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Next week, um, I mean, for us, I don't. Know, this is gonna come out on what Monday, which is yep. right before New Year's. We need to get. So we'll probably film this around New Year's. I'd love to get another guest one. next week because I think it's the yeah. week after that. Sid Beer said she can do it. Cool. So worst case scenario, we'll have a guest in two weeks, but maybe uh, Mindy week, could too. string yeah, together it's been, somebody next you know, week. Yeah. I wanted. I would. T- yeah. I would DM these people. From the chit chat shitty account, but then they might be like, well, <laughs> "Why is they Mindy?" They might that? not see it, right? So I you was have like, to like yeah. be friends with it. Yeah, so I was like, "I'm just gonna let Mindy talk yeah. to those people." Yeah, I have that. Yeah, two so we do have a bunch of guests, a, but because we kind of several. ended our first season, and then I'm transitioning my practice to and a new location, the and the holidays, like it's been really hard to get people. So we get it. So, but we've been having fun here. We've had some fun guests on, but we're going to have some other people that are probably bigger personalities in the Salt Lake area that you actually might know as well. Kind of like we had Modern Dad on. Um, we actually, there's a couple Michelle's of Michelle's been on. Yeah, twice. my sister's That's been, been on, Mish Pearson. Um, so it's been good. We have so, some other fun ones. Yeah. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, please, again, check us out on YouTube. So it's Chittister MD, it's Chit Chat with Chitty. Um, on iTunes, it's Chit Chat with Chitty MD. We're also on Spotify. So if you have Spotify, Spotify is awesome, by the way. I have a Spotify account now. I actually like it more than iTunes. Well, we get, <laughs> of our audio listens, I think like 97% of our audio listens are through iTunes. Okay. And, and, most then, people and then the rest that. are Spotify. Okay, cool. And then, yeah, you, all y'all Google podcast people. It's like 0.1% good luck. Google Pod. I, I think it's one person that's listening <laughs> to us on Google Podcasts. So. <laughs> it's all good. We Thank still you. Gotta no, throw we appreciate it. Thank you. We Please do. keep listening. 
All right, Tell thanks you guys. Google friends. Happy. <laughs> Must be Chris. <laughs> I don't feel lessons. Happy New Year! <laughs> thanks for tuning in. See you guys <laughs> next week. We got we just called Chris out. <laughs> Rocket Jordans with my suit. I'm a true gentleman. BMW matted black. Used to ride a minivan. Augment reality. Upsize and get a lift. Give that nose a job if you really need to see it shift. Got them wrinkles running scared. Kill them with some Botox. Keep your face looking fresh like my 50 pairs of shocks. Shy town, Saudi Arabia, high school, college at the U. Loma Linda, USC. Back to Utah round two. Not just simply tight like some creamer. I'm half and half. Watch me drop it like it's hot when you really need to laugh. Seven finger tummy tuck Everything in between Hit me up on Instagram Create reality from a dream Chit chat Chit chat with Chitty Chit chat Chit chat with Chitty Chit chat Chit chat with Chitty Chit chat with Chitty Sir MD